This is the outgoing Range Rover, the L405. And until a few minutes ago, I thought it still looked fantastic, clean, simple, and elegant. I'm not so sure now because for the first time, I've just seen the all new fifth generation Range Rover. And well, it looks like this. Has a familiar face, doesn't it? It could almost be a facelift of the previous model with its very similar headlight and grille layout. It's familiar Range Rover stuff from the side of the car too, still with this falling roof line, this very bold waistline here, and the sill line that comes up makes it all seem like it's converging at the back of the car. It still has the crease down the side here, but it's much sharper now. It's slimmer, really crisp and sharp, flush fitting door handles that just help it look much cleaner. And if you look very closely, lots of the rubber seals and finishes that you normally have around the glass house, they're gone again just makes it look so pure and clean and simple. And that is what's making the previous Range Rover, the L405, look just a little bit dated. This you'll recognize as well, this false grille. It doesn't do anything, but without it, there'd be nothing to break up that huge expanse of bodywork. Now this you might not recognize as being very Range Rover-ish at all. These tail lights, very tall, very slim, perfectly upright, connected across the back by this black trim here and the silver trim across the bottom. Between them, all those elements create this very crisp rectangle shape, which I think almost looks quite Apple-ish in the way it's designed. Of course, it wouldn't be a Range Rover without a split folding tailgate. This one has it. There you go, you can sit on that. It also now has a powered parcel shelf. I don't know why you need that. Most importantly, you can have proper event seating with your Range Rover. Now that's useful if you're at the polo on a shoot. I don't know, what do Range Rover owners do? Now, while I'm here, I want to talk about some of the technical aspects of this new Range Rover. Like before, the body is aluminium to reduce weight. The intelligent four-wheel drive system can decouple the front axle at a cruise to help save fuel. Meanwhile, gearboxes are still eight-speed autos. Now let's talk powertrains. It's not entirely straightforward, so I've got my script with me. You've got six-cylinder petrol and diesel engines there at the base of the range. Right at the top, there's a 4.4-litre twin-turbo V8. That, as we know, is a collaboration with BMW. It's got 530 horsepower, that thing. And it'll do naught to 60 in 4.4 seconds with that engine. That's probably fast enough, isn't it? There will be a full battery electric version in 2024. That's something to look forward to, the first all electric Range Rover. Now there are two plug-in hybrid versions. The one that I like most has got 510 horsepower. There's also a 440 horsepower one. They've got six cylinder petrol engines and 62 miles of electric only range. So in the real world, that's probably 50 miles of electric range. That's really good. I think most people will be able to do most of their daily journeys on electric alone. It'll also do up to 87 miles per hour in that mode. I think that's pretty good. Now talking about the chassis, they all have rear wheel steering as standard. There are still air springs all round, of course, the previous one did have 48 volt active anti-roll control, but the new car has got a much better, more sophisticated version of that system. Now, importantly, the basic structure of this new Range Rover is stiffer torsionally by as much as 50%. I think that's really important because when you drive an L405 Range Rover, you do feel the body just flexing a little bit. We can assume that this car will still be brilliant off-road. It's still a Land Rover. It's gonna be pretty peerless compared to other luxury SUVs off-road. And we're told that it's much more refined on-road as well than the previous ones. It's gonna be a proper luxury car. I think part of me was expecting a very futuristic interior, minimalist. You know, one big central digital display, no physical controls at all, Tesla style. Actually, I'm quite glad that they've been a bit more traditional than that. You do have two big 
digital displays. The instrument binnacle in front of you and this one here, this sort of floating digital screen. Not yet convinced, I like the floating one. But you do have physical controls for the heating down here, for the drive modes and other bits and pieces, the gear selector there. Yeah, it's a good cabin. It's spacious, it feels roomy, the materials are lovely, the build quality feels excellent. I think you're gonna be very happy in here, although you might be even happier in the back. Most Range Rovers will have five seats, but for the full plutocratic effect, you can have just four, the two rear chairs reclining like first-class airliner seats. There are short and long wheelbase variants, and for the first time, a full seven-seat model as well. Let's talk prices. The range starts at 94,400 for the base model diesel, rising well beyond 130,000 pounds for a top spec model. With SVO stuff, you could spend much, much more than that on a new Range Rover if you wanted to. Most people will spend more than 100,000 pounds on their Range Rovers, punchy stuff. Now, based on what I've seen so far, I think Land Rover is onto another winner with this car. JLR cannot afford to get this Range Rover wrong. It's such a cash cow for the company. I think there's lots to be optimistic about, but we won't know for certain until we've driven it. <laughs>